Wheel.me. We have Kai from Wheel.me who's going to present their solution. Uh, I'm not sure where Kai is. Ah, sorry. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Kai. Unusual, I know, in Germany. Uh, I work for the Norwegian tech company Wheel.me, uh, the company that has invented the world's first and only autonomous wheel. Now, robots are not that unique anymore. Uh, they've been around for a while, and moving things around autonomously is not particularly new anymore. In reality, the first AGVs that were meant to move around material came around in the 1950s. And they were at the time seen as revolutionary. I think everyone expected that soon all the industries are going to move things around autonomously. However, fast forward 70 years, and today the AGVs that you see running around in manufacturing facilities look pretty much the same as they did back in the day. They use a very similar technology. And while they've been replaced by autonomous mobile robots, um, for some reason, companies still don't automate. Um, so one of the things is that when we go to automotive, different types of manufacturing facilities, logistics facilities, then you still see a lot of people moving things around manually. And there are millions of those people. Only in the United States, there are more than 6 million people that are moving things around in different facilities. And our question was that if there are solutions like the one on the right side here, then why don't companies automate? And when we asked the companies, then they said that robots are way too expensive, they're way too rigid, slow, inflexible, and costly. So when you would even think about implementing an AMR solution, for one thing, you need to have a huge budget, uh, you need to readjust your facilities. Many of the AGVs still require magnetic tapes, which means that you need to predefine your routes. Uh, there is no flexibility if you need to move, uh, I mean, readjust your processes. So when Wilmi got started, those were the things that we were trying to fight against. And uh, we decided that it's not enough to improve the existing technologies, but we needed to do something different. So we needed to have a different kind of approach. And that's where the autonomous wheel came. So the company itself was founded in 2013. The first autonomous wheel came out in 2018. We've gone through quite a progress, so the product has changed quite a lot. So this one that you see on the stage, this, this one is one of the units, and I think there's one moving over there. Um, but by today, we have reached the production version of the product. So this is what we are installing at customer sites. But in principle, what we do with the autonomous wheel is that we attach it to existing objects. So anything you would need to move around in your facilities, whether it's different types of trolleys, racks, whether you want to move around tables, TVs, anything that you would need to move around, we can attach the autonomous wheels to it. So it can be big, it can be small, it can be light, it can be heavy. Uh, so it's much more flexible than other solutions out there. It also navigates fully autonomously. So differently from AGVs, we do not need any kind of magnetic tape. You can always readjust the missions. The robots will always be looking for the shortest route between point A to point B, however many points you have set up. So it's, uh, it's definitely the flexibility that differentiates it from all the other solutions out there. It is also the cost effectiveness. So the goal for us was to offer a solution that companies could actually afford. So that comes down to the business model, but in general, the whole product has been designed to be cost effective for companies and bring a return on investment. It is also minimal maintenance, and it's very effortless to install. So uh, all the units have a whole pattern on top of them. There is uh, often an adapter that is in between there. So there is this small white adapter in between. Uh, and by that, we can attach bolts uh, to connect the object to the autonomous wheels. Uh, our business model is robotics as a service, uh, which is part of the cost effectiveness and which is part of the low maintenance. So companies pay us a monthly fee, and by that they get the robots, they go get all the hardware that would be needed, including the charging stations, everything. They get the software that we have built in-house as well, all the navigation, and they also get the maintenance and the service level agreement. And in terms of maintenance, um, it includes, of course, the on-site support, the remote support, but a lot of the things have been also made in a way that it would be easy for the company to do it themselves. So with a lot of AGVs, you need to have a dedicated maintenance person on site. It's not the case with this. Uh, I'm not a mechanics engineer myself. I can change the robots myself. I can take out the wheel. If that breaks down, <coughs> I can switch out the robot. Now this one that you see over there, <coughs> that one is the main unit. So the wheels go in configurations of four. So in reality, to move around, you need four wheels. There is always one control unit. So that one is equipped with a computer. It has a camera in front that we use for navigating, that we use for localizing. 
If you see, then it's tilted a bit upwards. So we work in a lot of dynamic environments, which means that things move around. A lot of robots struggle with that. It's tilted upwards, so we use structures in the ceiling, which means that most companies don't change their ceiling too much. So our robots are always find, able to find markers up there to localize to see where they are, where they need to go. It also has a LiDAR, both in the front and in the back. So if you have people moving around, if you have other robots moving around, then the robot will either stop if you're getting too close to it, or it will navigate around. So it's perfectly safe to move around people. It is certified in the EU already as well. Uh, we do use a mechanical wheel. Uh, so that is part of the invention itself. Uh, the whole autonomous wheel, it is patented by us. Everything that we could patent, we did. Uh, this is uh, one of the founders. Uh, Rolf uh, was the guy who created this. So the mechanical wheel with a built-in motor. So that is the key to the autonomous wheel, basically. And uh, once you've installed the wheels, you've kind of attached them to the objects, everything else takes place in the software. Uh, so uh, normally when we start, then we create an initial map. So also over here, we mapped out the area over there in the fast forward booth. Um, if you have the map, then you can start creating missions. So basically the robot will be moving between different stations. A very traditional one for us would be to move components uh, from the supermarket area to the assembly line, for example. Um, so normally you would have people walking, literally pushing those carts from point A to point B, loading the carts, then moving to the next point. So we do all of that autonomously. Um, the app itself, it's also very easy to navigate. So you don't need to be a software engineer to do it. It is perfectly fine for the people who work in the warehouse to navigate with it. You can always press next goal on it. You can see everything with, that is happening with the robots. But in an operational environment, if you don't want to use a mobile device, then you can also press next goal on this analog remote control over here. In terms of existing use cases, we, do, we work cross-sectoral, but our biggest focus right now goes for automotive. That is where we see the biggest benefits. Uh, but it is a lot of different objects. We put the wheels on top of hospital beds as well. Um, we put the wheels on top of different kinds of racks, trolleys, dollies like the one here. Um, and we have the wheels running in operations. So uh, early on, we got some very good companies on board in the US from automotive sector. So it's different objects with different weight loads, um, weight capacity. Um, we are installing in the US, in Germany, Spain, uh, and Ireland right now. So it is very exciting times for us. Uh, we are scaling up very quickly. So we are producing the robots in Norway. So we have our own production uh, facility in Fredrikstad, uh, which is an automated production line. So uh, once we reach the full capacity, which is next year, then we will produce one robot every 90 seconds. So it's 80,000 wheels per shift per year. If needed, we can quickly scale up to three shifts. Uh, and yeah, we're going global very quickly. First office internationally opened two months ago in Detroit. The next step is Germany. And that would be it from me. Thank you. Super. <laughs> well, thank you very much there from Kai from Real, uh, Wheel Me. Uh, a great presentation. It's a, a very interesting and exciting technology. And uh, the use of ceilings, I think, as a, as a waypoint, as you say, um, yep. I've never seen a ceiling be changed in my life. Yep. So I think that's a very good choice. Exactly. Now it's obviously an opportunity for our audience and uh, jury members here in the front row to pose a few questions. We've got Leon here who's uh, looking after us. Maybe start here on the left. What is the maximum load uh, that four wheels can handle? So one wheel has a weight capacity of 100 kilograms. So we do them in configurations of four. So this one over there can take 400 kilograms. If we need more weight load, we add more wheels. So we do right now four and eight, which is what we're very comfortable with. 12 is something that we're working on right now. So that would be 1.2 tons. Incredible. OK, uh, from CJ here. Yeah, for the software, the user interface, what languages do you um, uh, cater to? Is it English, German? <laughs> Yeah, right now it's uh, right now it's English. Uh, I think right now when we're getting more and more active in German market, then uh, we of course are able to quickly adopt to German language as well and with the other markets as well. Any more questions here from our audience? Yeah, uh, quick question: um, How intelligent are they? I mean, is uh, is it perfect chaos in a location where they use uh, like a hundred of them, or is it like, or are they finding patterns, or how does it work? So we have our own traffic management system. So that means that there are different rules always like, 
if our robots meet each other in an aisle, uh, there are different rules that we, we have defined so that they would operate in synchronization and move around each other. So, because we do move around in also environments where you have others, other AGVs moving around. So that's why the application has a lot of, there, there's a lot of possibility what kind of rules to set up so you can force the robots to take the right lane, for example, uh, not to go on the pedestrian lines, not to go meet the forklifts uh, in the aisle. So we can set up a lot of rules, basically, to create a yeah, good environment for them. Right. Is that predefined or is that intelligently hmm. uh, created? So when, when we speak about other HEVs that are not ours, then we need to predefine them. If we talk about our own robots, then they do it intelligently. So I think we're going to move the microphone to Tilman. I have one question. What, what is the, the monthly cost of, of set of four? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, so it is much much cheaper than the existing AMRs out there. Uh, it does depend on a few criteria. So since we do robotics as a service, then what we take into account is the lifetime of the wheels. So that means that we calculate driving time for one thing. How long is the driving time going to be? What are the floor conditions? Because of course the wheel does have certain limitations in terms of floor conditions. So it's very rough floor conditions. We need to take into account that the price needs to be a bit higher because we need to give you more spare parts. Normally, the pricing would start somewhere around $240 per month per set. OK. I think we have time for one more question here from Jens. Is the software open in some way? Or, or, hmm. or are there software modules, open software modules? Or? No, the software is uh, ours, so the uh, customers are using our own interface. However, we are working on APIs to be able to integrate with, of course, warehouse management systems and different systems that companies are already using. Okay, well, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much to Kai from Wheelme. <laughs> and that also wraps up our pitches for, day, for today for the Fast Forward Awards, supported by Elector and the uh, Messe München here at Electronica 2022.